Welcome to First Baptist Church of Gas City. Today, we'll talk about sowing seeds in different kinds of soil. Back in the day when Jesus walked the earth, there wasn't the understanding of soil and, and growing crops and such as we know it today. We didn't know all the different ways of conditioning the soil. People had an understanding. They even used salt, the right amount of salt. <laughs> And there's a lot of being a nomad of the day as well. And to think about a parable, a parable, just a reminder, a parable is an earthly saying with a heavenly meaning. Earthy saying with a heavenly meaning. That's what a parable is. And if we thought that we and all by ourselves were responsible for the growth of new plants and new, new life, then it could be a pretty daunting task. Think about my uncle and his two gardens how all the scraps and, and the grass coverings and uh, grass clippings go into a giant pile and, and I look at the garden it looks beautiful but I look at the work that's a lot of work and that can be daunting for you each and every one of us, if we all had our own garden and we all were responsible to make sure that soil was just right so that those seeds would grow and be fruitful. But I'd like to, us to see something interesting about this story of the parable of the sower. How we all have a part in sowing seeds of faith, but it doesn't, re doesn't rely on one individual or just a few. From Matthew chapter 13, we read, that same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path. And the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He, he who has ears, let him hear. And he says, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. 
But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. We are like the sower. Our lives, we are sowing good to the world. The things that we do, the things that we say, the actions that we take, are all acts of sowing. Now, we have a saying at school that says, control what you can control. Control you. Our responsibility as people of faith are to freely and graciously and generously sow the goodness of God in this world. Do we go to each person that we have in we have contact? Do we check their soil? Do we ask every single person we open the door for as we go into the store? Do we say, are you doing okay? Is everything right with you? Are you in need of anything? Do we do that? It's kind of impractical unless that's your mission. Unless you're the Walmart greeter. And you, every single person who walks through that door, you say, I am so grateful you came into this building to do your shopping. Is everything going okay for you? Is there anything that I can do for you? Have you ever had a Walmart for you to do that? How is it with your soul? Are you experiencing anything that's blocking your joy today? No. That's not each and every one of us, our role to do that for everybody we come into contact. All we are called to do is to sow. Put that bag around your waist and that seed of goodness that has been sown in your life, just woo, 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 woo. <laughs> Got to take care of this. But that's all we're called to do, is be generous with what we have received. Let it out. Toss it out there. Be free with it. Don't worry about the soil. Now we're looking at it in context of that day. Today, we would take care of our soils if we have a certain plot. But back then, they didn't all have that opportunity to do that. They just needed to get the seed out there. Now, it says that if seed lands on compacted soil, the birds are going to come and get it because it doesn't land in that soil bed. It's not in there. It's not going to have that warmth, that that. moisture that it needs. Now we have in our driveway, in the apron of the garages, that in the cracks, we got marigolds growing. I did not plant them there. 
I remember shaking the, the marigold plants like way over there, and now they're growing way over here. It's like, how'd that happen? And I got no marigolds growing where they used to grow, where I had them last year. Soil must have been too compacted, and the birds were just enjoying all that. But that happens in life. Not everybody we do good for is going to receive it with gratitude and graciousness and transformation. Do we have that in mind? Not everybody's going to accept our good deeds, our good actions, our good words. Should you fret over that? I don't think so. Because what did Jesus say? I have come that they may have life and have it to it, everybody. Fullest. Everybody again? Fullest. Okay? And if we're worried about it, are we living life to our fullest? Nope. Now, the rocky. The rocky soil. Words just showing good kindness everywhere, and other people are excited too. They go, oh my goodness! That person was so kind to me, I'm grateful. Then the next person they meet, get out of my way! That's terrible. Why don't you why don't you get a life? Kind of reminds me of church camp. When my wife and I were taking people to church camp, taking kids to church camp. That was the best time of those kids' lives. You just think it was. The band would be playing. The praising would be happening. Kids would be having a great time. They'd be smiling, laughing, enjoying God. God's presence among his people. And as soon as they get back from camp and life smack them in the face, I sometimes would not like church camp. There were some kids who actually looked forward to church camp more than they did every day, every Sunday church. And that just bugged the bejeebies out of me. How can you, how can you think that that is better church than what happens every Sunday where you have consistency even if it's boring. At least you got the consistency and you're getting the same dosage every week. And that's why I try to be a little more enthusiastic about the message. Because I don't want people wanting to go somewhere else and say, hey, I'm going to get my real church on. Because if we're just looking for that high for the moment, that, oh my God, is great! And then as soon as life hits us in the face, we wilt, we scorch, we have difficulties. Am I to worry about that? Are you to worry about that? All we're called to do, scoop into the bag, and share it. Right? Scoop into that bag of life and just <laughs> get it out there. Don't worry about what you can't fix. Don't worry about the things you can't control. God is at work in everybody's life in whatever way God is doing it. All we're called to do is live it. Because somebody was generous with their scoops and we received it. And then we have the situation where someone's been generous with their scoops in our life and but we got a lot going on in our lives. You notice in that portion of scripture, it actually says the 
deceitfulness, okay, fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, but the worries of this life, the worries of this life, and you can just think of all the worries you might experience, and other people experience. And the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. Because when we're worried about everything else, it takes the joy out of us. It takes the joy, it zaps it. And other people are experiencing this too. But what's our responsibility? What's our faithful responsibility? Reach in that bag, get a generous bunch, boom, and toss it everywhere. Be kind, be generous, be loving, be hopeful. Dig into there. Woo! Yes, you know that there are going to be people who are worried and, and going to be caught up in making like big, big money, and they miss out on life. But that's not your worry. It's not our worry. It's not our worry. Does that make sense? It's not our worry. All we're concerned about is how many children who are splashing in a water thing really care about anybody around them. Becky and I were we go by the pool and we and we hear, we go in the park and we hear all this yelling. And I'm thinking, why do they yell so much? What makes water make us want to yell and scream and all that stuff? You can either hear that as annoying, or you can hear that as, hey, that's life. It's happening. They're having a good time. They're splashing around. They're not worried about everybody else. We either are prepared to enjoy it or we're not. But that's not their responsibility to worry about. It. They're to live their life to its fullest. And we have the opportunity to do the same. We can learn from others who are living their life to its fullest and enjoy it. Take a cue from them and enjoy it. Because if we are in faith, hopefully, we're those where the seed fell on good soil. The man who hears the word and understands it. He produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. See, we grab it in our bags and we're tossing that seed everywhere. The seed of love, the seed of forgiveness, the seed of possibilities, the seed of hope. And we're giggling about it. We're not worried about am I overseeding this area? Am I overseeding this area? No, you just reach in there and you go, Broadcast sewing. Wee, wee. Just being crazy generous with God's love, God's forgiveness, God's generosity. And the more we share, the more possibility there's going to be some good soil, some soil that's prepared. And who does the preparing of the soil? Of our hearts. Who really does that? Jesus. So isn't it great? We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to worry about it. God is already at work in the field. And all we are called to do is be exuberant in our living of what God is doing in our lives and what's God done in other people's lives. You know, when we sing Faith of Our Fathers, we're singing the 
best parts of them. And it includes mothers too, even though it says fathers. But the idea that the faith of our fathers, our foremothers, our you know, people who've gone on before, the things we remember best about them are the, is the joy in which they live their lives. Seldom do we talk about, oh, grumpy, whatever, whoever, do we? Do you say, man, I just appreciate old grumpy so-and-so. Occasionally we do. Because that grumpy so-and-so motivated us to be even happier around them. Because it became our challenge well, let's see when they're going to break. They're going to break with that smile. They're going to let loose with that laugh, that belly laugh. I think we know people like that, who we get this motivation in our hearts, and we say, that's going to be my mission. That person's going to smile before the end of the day. You ever experience that? Digging deep into your bag and just whoosh, letting it fly? Even in the midst of our sorrows, what are we called to do? Dig deep in our bag and toss it. Not annoyingly, but to dig deep be generous in the way God has created you to be generous. It could be with your time. It could be with your tenderness. It could be with your calmness. And when we stop worrying about everybody else's attitude, because you can't change attitude. Can we? Can we change someone's attitude? Like we, we want to. We say, I'm going to give them an attitude adjustment. We can dream. But we really can't. I've taken kids out in the hallway and in my mind I'm thinking, I'm going to change his attitude. It doesn't work. They've got to want to change. They've got to want to have a better soil in their life. And all we can do is pray, hope, believe. And God's going to make a fruit, a harvest so wonderful that we can't even fathom. So oh, keep on digging deep into that bag of grace and mercy in your own life and get it out there. Because when we're worried about other people, situation to where we want to change them so they will hear the word and they'll come to know Christ, allow God to prepare them. Allow us to live life in the joy of his salvation. And when they're ready, when they're ready, when God has prepared them, they will respond. Isn't that nice? When we try to control everything, we're miserable. Do you want to be miserable? Or do you want to be like the sower? Just dig in your bag and just let it out. And trust God, you're going to produce a fruit. Just keep moving, just like Johnny Appleseed. Plants, trees everywhere. Did he go back to those trees? Probably not. Kind of wondered why he has that pan on his head. 
Is he hoping that someone will harvest some apples and make some dumplings? Something? I don't know. But the good news is, we can learn from the sower. Sow it. And God will grow it. Don't worry. So, in Jesus' name.